Shalom, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachachwadash, and double honors as always to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to go into Habakkuk, the second chapter, all right, which is something I went into um, in times past, uh, but the Spirit has jumped on me to go into it again as it, you know, speaks to everything that we are witnessing, everything that we are going through. And it gives a lot of insight and a lot of answers to, you know, questions uh, that we as believers, you know, may have in our minds at times. Now, Habakkuk, you know, was around during the Neo-Babylonian Empire, all right, which the uh, Chaldeans, were ultimately um, at the forefront of it. You know of Nebuchadnezzar, which there were a few, there were many of those, but the name Habakkuk, to start it off, Chabak Wak, all right, means to embrace, all right, and ultimately, as he had many, you know, uh, worries, questions, you know, um, he was given, you know, understanding and comfort and he was to embrace the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai as we should embrace it, all right, and not be uh, discomforted by it. Now, the root word of his name, as we go into words, all right, taught to us by our apostles and elders, Chabak, all right, it means to embrace, to clasp, to fold one's hands in idleness, to embrace. All right, so ultimately, um, we know that in the first chapter, all right, which uh, we'll skim through some of the points, all right, the Chaldeans were used to punish Judah, all right. Now, we know that the northern kingdom, all right, went into the Assyrian captivity, but Judah eventually went into the Babylonian captivity, and the Chaldeans were at the forefront of it, all right, and the Chaldeans, to understand who they were, all right. Um, as we'll show you, they were the the uh, ones considered the wisest. <clears throat> they were the witches and warlocks of the Neo-Babylonian Empire. All right. And they were the ones to bring back the spirit of ancient Babel. All right. Now, just as Assyria did. All right. Because Assyria was ultimately the Neo-Assyrian Empire. And this was all bringing back the spirit of Nimrod. All right. The spirit dealing with, you know, uh, all of that wisdom and left hand, you know, uh, magic that the serpent brought into the earth. All right. The uh, Hamites at the time of the Tower of Babel brought it back. And now here. All right. At the time of the Neo Assyrian, the Neo Babylonian Empire, the Assyrians, which are Shemitic people, were ruling and they were raised up. All right. As we see here to punish Judah, all right? And Habakkuk, as he's in the captivity, he's witnessing all of these misfortunes happening to his people. He's seeing all of these evil things, you know, taking place. And here in Habakkuk 1 and 2, it says, O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou will not hear? Even cry out to thee of violence and I will not save. See, and why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance for spoiling and violence are before me. And there are they that raise up strife and contention. Therefore, the law is slacked and wrong judgment doth never go uh, and judgment doth never go forth. Right. Because these heathens, they don't rule with the law, statutes and commandments. They rule by their own code. All right. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrongful judgment. All right. Does proceed. All right. And we see that happening in our time. All right. So the Heavenly Father comforts him, you know, that ultimately he's going to eventually, you know, have mercy on our people, gather him, you know, gives him a, a few, you know, uh, prophecies. But right here 
in verse 6, it says, For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. You see? And we know pursuant to prophecy, all right, Isaiah 47 and 1, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground, okay? There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, all right? So the, the Babylon the great is likened to daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate, all right? So the Chaldeans were raised up by the Heavenly Father, all right? to uh basically put us in captivity okay and when you read the book of daniel the seventh chapter this particular kingdom associated with the chaldeans okay this is the book of uh daniel the seventh chapter which lord willing will get into this again as well and the third verse it says in four great beast came from out of the sea different nations who the lord rose up out of the people to rule the sea represents the people diverse from one another the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings and that represents the assyrian babylonian empire okay so this is the first series of captivities that we went into after solomon's kingdom was uh, rent and split you know as you go on down through the uh, kings that ruled eventually at the time of uh, Hezekiah, all right, the Israelites, starting with the northern kingdom, went into the Assyrian captivity and Judah went into the Babylonian captivity. So that's what this first captivity, this first beast represents. And within these beasts, the Israelites will be held captive into captivity. All right. So the, the captivity that Habakkuk is in at this time. It's synonymous and associated with the Chaldeans, all right, which ultimately that first beast was the Assyrian Babylonian Empire, you see? And when you deal with the Chaldeans, all right, the Lord said, I raise up the Chaldeans, all right, the word is Kashadayama, all right? And to get to the point, it's a territory in lower Mesopotamia, the region of Babylon, Okay, the, uh, Iraq, you know, over in that, that, that region. Okay. But it says those persons considered wisest in the land by extension. All right. Now, you can do more research. And if you find anything interesting, post it on the comment board. But I just typed in what were the Chaldeans best known for. And it says here, the Chaldeans were known for revitalizing the cities of Babylon and Uruk, which ultimately this takes you back to where? Let's get Genesis, the 10th chapter. Okay. Genesis, the 10th chapter. And we'll go to the ninth verse. All right. Speaking of Nimrod. All right, which led a, a major rebellion, all right, which was the first rulership, the first dynasty kingdom to be raised up after the flood. All right, these are actual Hamites, okay? And Cush begot Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one in the earth, and he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, even Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Yahweh, in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Achad, Kalna, in the land of Shinar. All right. And out of that land went forth Assur, which is Assyria, and built it Nineveh. All right. The capital of Assyria. All right. Rehoboth, Kalna. All right. And so forth. So ultimately, all right, after the Tower of Babel was eventually broken up. When you read here. Genesis 11 and 9, therefore, is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did confound the language of all the earth. All right, so he confounded the Tower of Babel. Okay, so after that point, all right, these particular uh, regions were ruled over by, you know, different nations, but the power, all right, of Babel didn't come back fully into the Neo Babylonian Empire 
and it was ultimately the Chaldeans, you know, Nebuchadnezzar was, you know, that were used to bring back that power. So today we have the daughter of the Chaldeans who have brought back that energy and power into the earth. See, they've brought back all of those gods, goddesses, you know, uh, you know, the, the way of rule, tyranny. And now they have more, uh, they have more, uh, uh, you know, power to work with, you know, have more control. So the Chaldeans, which were the witches and warlocks of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, because, again, you have Babel, you know, dealing with Nimrod. Then you have the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which we're reading about now. OK, which ultimately um, fell, you know, during the time Daniel, the prophet, was on the scene. OK, and the Chaldeans were associated with that. But then you have. The daughter of Babylon, the daughter of the Chaldeans, which is Babylon the Great, which is fulfilled in this captivity, which we're in now, as we're going to tap into to show you Habakkuk's answer is associated with what's going to happen in this time. The, the, the vision he was given on when it would all end. So the Chaldeans were known for revitalizing the cities of Babylon in Uruk. All right. They were also prominent astro astronomers and astrologers. OK, which the people who rule this earth, they tap into that energy. That's why you have CERN, NASA and all of this garbage. Right. Another famous occurrence was the Babylonian captivity carried out by Nebuchadnezzar the second. All right. Um, let's see here. What was the Chaldeans greatest ach achievement? Chaldeans and their predecessors, the Babylonians. OK. Made major contributions in writing. All right. They had their colleges, <laughs> um, you know, they, they, they had a lot going on. You know, they basically brought back the uh, energy of Nimrod, which is tied to Gilgamesh. Some people said they're the same people, but that's associated with this, you know, this, uh, you know, stronghold called, you know, uh, Ur Uruk, you know. And when you deal with Gilgamesh, when you deal with Nimrod, you know, pretty much he had a hard on to obtain eternal life <laughs> that was one of his main you know uh studies was to you know figure out how to live forever and that's what they were doing you know doing the tower of babel all right and you have the same thing going on today you know that whole energy has been brought back and now they have more technology now they have you know more science now they have more room to work with they have more power to use all of this technology and science of the ancient all right, to obtain eternal life in this time, you see, but that's another study for another time. All right, so yeah, the 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 the, the ancient Babylonians. All right, going back to Nimrod, who established Babel, and you know the original Assyrian Nineveh and all of that, he was uh, obsessed with uh, uh, obtaining eternal life, and now we see the elites of this world today talking about obtain obtaining eternal life you see living forever immortality trying to basically receive the birthright all right that ultimately has been given you know to the israelites from the foundation of the earth to have eternal life they want to live as gods on the earth and they think they're going to obtain it through witchcraft pseudoscience and all of these left hand means see that was with the ancient you know, uh, you know, that was the real evolution to, to evolve into a God, you know, and that's all back here today. You true, you see, it's, it's all back here today. All right. But they hide it and present it in ways that, you know, you wouldn't even understand it. All right. But the Lord has sent the prophets. All right. Because that which is then is now. So the Chaldeans. All right. Were uh, ultimately. They brought back. You know, that energy of Nimrod, you know, they brought back all of that ancient science. All right. But it says they uh, they had major contributions in writing, science and technology. All right. The same thing is happening here today through the daughter of the Chaldeans. See, mathematics and astrology. See, mathematics and astrology. All right. And that's big here in Babylon, the great. All right. They devised. The time system we use today with its 60 second all right, minutes 
and 60 minute hours that all goes back all right to this empire okay that that goes back here to here to what we're reading about okay the neo babylonian empire the assyrians all right the uh babylonians which were assyrians as well when you deal with the neo babylonian empire but the original rulers of that territory were hamites okay it says they also described the circle as having 360 degrees you see so all of that stuff that we uh you know pretty much have been presented with in today's world it has its roots in babel in the neo-babylonian empire man okay um let's see here Let's see, the, the Chaldean dynasty, also known as Neo-Babylonian dynasty, all right, and enumerated as Dynasty X of Babylon. And we see that spirit of X back here today was the ruling dynasty of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, ruling as kings, all right, yada, yada, yada. And you can, you know, look up more dealing uh, with the Chaldeans, okay, um, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, and we read about all of these things. Now... Just to get back to the to the lesson, all right, here in this chapter, Habakkuk is crying out to the Lord of why are you allowing these wicked rulers to, because to, when you read up on the Chaldeans, they went through lands, you know, taken, you know, the same thing Nimrod did, you know, the, uh, you know, it was a tyrant, you know, using, you know, science, witchcraft, conquering, as the scriptures say, Nimrod became a mighty hunter in the earth. You see, you have to understand that spirit is back here today via Esau, which the word Nimrod means rebellion. OK, and uh, the, we're, we're witnessing a rebellion against the Most High all over again in another Tower of Babel. All right. Being uh, <coughs> attempted by Esau and the heathen that have joined unto him. So the Lord said, for lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land. And possess dwelling places that are not theirs. And we know that's is what Esau does today. They are terrible and dreadful. And their judgment and their dignity shall precede themselves. So the Lord basically said, look, this is, you know, I'm raising this nation up. You know, the, and within that, your people are going to be judged. All right. But he, he's describing what they would do. Their horses are swifter than leopards. All right. Which we can tie that to Esau, you know, his military. The leopard tied to the Greeks. And are more fierce than the evening wolves, and their horsemen shall spread themselves, meaning their military will be spread, all right, throughout the regions to conquer. And that's happening again today. See? And their horsemen shall come from far, and they shall fly as the eagle that hastes it to eat. Okay? So this is talking about the Chaldeans, but in spirit, we can tie this all to what we're witnessing and crying out to the Lord about now. Okay? They shall, verse 10, they shall scoff at kings and princes shall be a scorn unto them and they shall deride every stronghold. All right. They will go and mock kings, you know, uh, you know, take down dominions and set up what they want. The same thing that this devil has done. All right. So ultimately, um, you know, they were established to correct us. All right. But when you read here, just to get to the point, in verse 17 um, I'll just get to the point. Habakkuk says, shall they therefore empty their net and not spare to continually slay the nations? So Habakkuk's cry was, Lord, when are you going to end this? Why are you allowing this? You see, and now we have understanding of why. But as you read Habakkuk, the second chapter, the Lord gives Habakkuk a vision of how he would end all of this. You see? It wasn't going to happen through the Neo-Babylonian Empire as we get Daniel, the seventh chapter. The end. All right, is not associated with the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which is the, you know, the first beast. OK, the end is associated. All right. With the revival of the fourth beast. You see, Yahweh won't send his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, back until the revival of the fourth beast you see 
that's when everything will end. That's when the Lord is going to set judgment. See? Now, we'll get Daniel to seventh chapter. Lord willing, the spirit, you know, getting back to these breakdowns. Um, you know, Lord willing, I'll get into that this week coming up. But um, the Most High answers the prophet Habakkuk here in verse uh, one. And he says, I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the tower. And I will watch to see what he says unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Okay. And the Lord said unto me, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. See, and ultimately he made the vision plain so that we can come to you today in these times and break it down. Right. So he said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. So Habakkuk received a vision in the form of an answer and he wrote it down so that ultimately throughout the generations we can receive it all right and make sense of it through the holy spirit which assists us all right and it's basically yahweh shai in a spiritual sense now it says the vision is yet for an appointed time right but at the end it shall speak see and we know at the end all right this is the book of <laughs> Second Edward six and seven, then answered I and said, "What shall be the parting asunder of the times?" The same thing Habakkuk was asking, Esdras is asking, or when shall be the be, shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? All right, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So Esau is the end of the world. So the end, at the end that shall speak, is basically speaking to Esau's end. All right, which is all tied to the daughter of the Chaldeans, the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great. All right, which they have now brought back the energy of the, uh, the, the uh, Nimrod. The Neo-Babylonian Empire is now fulfilled in what these devils are doing. All right. And the, the Heavenly Father tells you in Isaiah, the 47th chapter, all right, that they would stand with enchantments, sorceries. All right. They would they would lean upon, you know, the witchcraft, astrologers, stargazers. And that's what we're witnessing now. All right. So the end wasn't going to come in Habakkuk's time, just like the Lord told Ezra's. All right, in Second Ezra, the fourth chapter, in the thirty-sixth verse, and unto these things Uriel the archangel gave them answer and said, "Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, as a matter of fact, start at thirty-five. Did not the souls of the righteous ask these questions in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion?'" When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? All right. And that's what we're asking. All of our forefathers have asked these things, right? And unto these things, Uriel, the archangel, gave them answer and said, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he have weighed the world in a balance. By measure have he measured the times, and by number have he numbered the times, and he doth not move nor stir them. And to the said measure be fulfilled. So as we're reading, going back to Daniel, the seventh chapter, we're not going to get the kingdom until all of these rulerships will rise up. All right. And then, and then ultimately be destroyed. All right. And we know pursuant to Revelation, the 18th chapter, Babylon, the great would have to be raised up. OK. And be destroyed. You see. That's when the kingdom comes. Revelation 19 and 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto our power. Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he have judged the great whore which did corrupt the, the earth with her fornication. All right. And avenged the blood of his servants at, at, at her hand. See? And again, they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever see so this has to take place the destruction of babylon the great has to take place before we get the kingdom that's when the reward comes and that's in this time we believe that through faith and through the things that we're seeing through these prophecies being fulfilled you see so 
the vision that Habakkuk is receiving is associated, all right, with this kingdom. See? He, you know, he he basically was complaining about the Chaldeans, all right, and we could tie particular things in Revel in Habakkuk, the first chapter, to things that the Edomites are to today are doing, because they are the daughter of the Chaldeans. They bring back the energy of the Chaldeans, which the Chaldeans brought back the energy of ancient Babel, who led a rebellion against the Most High, who tried to, you know, establish the Tower of Babel. Now we have the rulers of today trying to establish the Tower of Babel in a digital sense. And they are trying to attain immortality. Okay? If you look up Gilgamesh, all right, what you hear about the Epic of Gilgamesh, you know, they tie that to Nimrod. But um, ultimately, he was uh, infatuated with becoming immortal. All right. And he dealt with all kind of witchcraft. But when you deal with <laughs> science today, they're dealing with. All right. Im they, they're trying to get uh, uh, immor uh be immortal. All right. Let's see here. Human immortality. See. Let's see if we can find something on it. See, immortality in ancient fantasy revived by transhumanism. See, and we're witnessing everything that went on back then happening today, all right, but in different terms, man. Okay? Futurists predict human immortality will be achieved by 2030. All right. And, you, and when you deal with Gilgamesh, ultimately, that's where you get a story of a flood. And a lot of people like to say, well, the Bible just copied the story. Well, again, the sons of Ham. Survived the flood just as the Shem. All right. Japhet. And, and ultimately, they would pass down the story of the flood to their descendants. You see. So the Bible didn't steal the story of the flood from the epic of Gilgamesh. It's just that the sons of Ham have their history they have their writings and they talked about a flood but one thing we do know when we study ancient Babel Nimrod you know which they tie to Gilgamesh he was infatuated with, with, with immortality and we see that same concept trying to be achieved today all right through what is known as transhumanism and what is transhumanism OK. The belief or theory that the human race can evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations, especially by means of science and technology. And this is where the haragma is going to come in. All right. Which is all a snare. OK. To ultimately enslave your ass in a digital sense. You see. So as we're reading. Back in Habakkuk, the second chapter. All right. For the vision, Habakkuk 2 and 3, is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come to pass. It will not tarry. So the Heavenly Father is getting ready to give Habakkuk a vision of the nation that will be raised up, all right, in the time that he will bring the kingdom and give us the reward and put out all wickedness. You see, bruise Satan under his feet, as the scriptures say. Because it is promised, all right, that, you know, the, the head of the serpent will be crushed. Well, that will be fulfilled, all right, after all of these kingdoms will be raised up through Babylon the Great, which is the revival of the fourth beast, Roman, the Roman Empire. See? And this is the last, this is the last rulership of the heathen. All right, as the scriptures say, the time of the Gentiles would be ended. Okay? Luke, the uh, 21st chapter, Jerusalem will be trodden down of actual heathen to the time of those actual heathen will be ended. And that's where we are now. OK, so this vision, which he's getting ready to give him, which we can tie this to all of the visions, the prophets received them in time. It will not tarry in its for an appointed time. And we're in that appointed time. 
Let's look up that word appointed time. I never looked that up. For an appointed time. All right. Ma. Ma. Wa. Eid. Okay. Appointed time. Meeting. Appointed time. Sacred season. And we're in that sacred season. Appointed season. Okay. And that, that season is, is associated with end time prophecy. Your eyed is the root word to fix, to appoint. As the Heavenly Father said, he fixed the times. He ain't going to move them until the said measure be fulfilled, man. So we're at that time. We're in those times that our forefathers long for and cry for and receive visions about. Habakkuk 2 and 4, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. See? So ultimately, the ruler that's associated with the, uh, the the time we would get the kingdom, his soul, which is lifted up, all right, would not be right. All right. Let's read this in the NLT. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves. They trust in their science and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to the most high. So the man that will be in rulership. <laughs> All right, before we got the kingdom will be an absolutely wicked and demonic All right, man he wouldn't be upright so that would mean the just would have to live by faith and, and see when you get revelation the 13th chapter okay this is the system and the, the man the Edomites that will be in rulership leading up to end time prophecy going to end time prophecy and what they would try to do was establish a system to where they could become God through technology, all right, and trick the people into believing they can become immortal and become God through receiving that haragma, you know, making the nations to bow to their image, using witchcraft, doing miracles. This is the system that's in rulership, all right, but the beauty of it is it's associated with end time prophecy, and the just would have to live by faith because. You know, synonymous with Revelation 13, you have Revelation 14 in which a new song would be sung. All right. And ultimately, what is the new song synonymous with the everlasting gospel being preached? OK, Revelation 14 and six. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. All right. Let's get Rebel, um, Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And the Internet will be a big you know, component of how that would happen. And then shall the end come. See, so the new song would have to be sung. All right. While Esau was trying to establish in more, you know, his, his his wickedness in the earth. You see, and one of the biggest Parts of the new song is what? Revelation 14 and 9. The everlasting gospel is what? A big part of it is saying with a loud voice, the third angel followed them, Revelation 14 and 9, because the angels speak through men on earth. This message comes directly from the heavens. That's what makes it 100% pure. Okay? If any man worship the beast, Esau and his image, his system that he's established, which is rooted in, you know, uh, Babel, Babylon, Babylonian, Egyptian, Canaanite, Greco-Roman customs, right? If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his haragma in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture. So this message would have to go out, you see, before the destruction came. But it would have to happen at the same time this devil was trying to establish his image, his haragma. So that would make it a very dangerous all right, situation and a straight gate that we would be in. All right. So this is why it says in Revelation 14 and 12. <laughs> in the NLT, this means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently, obeying his commandments and maintaining their faith. In Yahweh Shai. See? So Habakkuk 2 
and four, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. He's going to take it there. He's going to try to do some very, very demonic and proud things. He's going to have some very boastful talking points. He's going to trust in his science, his technology. <clears throat> but the just is going to have to live by faith. All right. So he goes on to describe, describe the image of the beast as you keep reading. All right. And what he would do. Yea, also because he transgressed by wine. He is a proud man. All right. What is that wine? Let's get Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in Yahweh's hands that have made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. All right. Now, we know the, the word, the Hebrew word for wine is yayan. All right. But wine could also be taken as spiritual fornication wickedness okay which intoxicates you spiritually all right let's look at the word intoxication <coughs> intoxicated drunkenness tipsiness and that's how the nations are as a matter of fact the scriptures say they are drunken isaiah 20 uh nine and nine stay yourselves and wonder cry ye out and cry they are drunken but not with wine they stagger but not with strong drink so what are they drunk our people are drunk off of the philosophies of babylon and that's this man's transgression is his his ideology his his way his philosophy because it's all rebellion against yahweh bashim Shai. it's all rebellion against the natural way all right isaiah 24 And five, the earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. Let's read this in the NLT. I don't think I've ever read it in the NLT. The earth suffers for the sins of its people, the rulers, and the people who have taken on the, the ways of the rulers, who are drunk off of the wine of the rulers, for they have twisted God's instructions, violated his laws, and broken its everlasting covenant, which is associated with a land Sabbath. You're supposed to let the earth rest. This man just goes around conquering and drilling and ex explode, ex blowing things up. Just he just does not stop. Okay, which that's the spirit of Cain, the, the tiller of the earth, which Esau was also known as the tiller of the earth. When you go into ancient, uh, uh, older Bibles, it tells you Esau was also a tiller of the earth. The uh, beloved brother uh, Yashalam brought that out. Okay, GMS Watchmen. So Habakkuk 2 and 5, yea, because he transgressed by wine. So this man who will be raised up before the end came, which we know is Esau, he his transgression will be his philosophies, man. He is a proud man. What does the book of Obadiah tell you? Obadiah, in, in various scriptures, he's known, he's, known, he's known as the most proud. Obadiah, verse 3, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee. See, speaking to Esau, the pride of thine heart. Let's look up this word pride. He's a proud man. All right. Zadawan. Zadawan. All right. Insolence, presumptuous, arrogance. Look up the word insolence. And this is what we're witnessing being uh, talked about in the earth. Go listen to the, uh, Noah Harari. All right. Which when you look up Noah Yuwal Harari within his name, Yuwal. Let me see here real quick. All right. Yuval Noah Harari. When you look up. Let's just go and listen to this guy. We ain't got to play him, but you'll hear the pride. Just listen to some of his talking points, which he's tied with, you know, Swab and the WEF. And, the, you know, he's known as the prophet of science. But when you look up Yuval, Yuval, okay, that actually goes to 
the family line of Cain. Okay. Let's get Genesis, the fifth or the fourth chapter, where you get the lineage of Cain. That that word you you all is here. That's one of the uh, sons. You know, as you go down in the generations, he's a descendant of Cain. See, and what does it mean? Your ball, all right. That's this word, you vol. <laughs> it means stream of water, you know. Your ball, stream, water course. And he, he's bringing a bunch of wickedness, a stream of wickedness to bring, to lead. And they're leading the world, all right, into this new way. They're carrying away, to carry away, to lead away. And when you listen to this guy, he's completely demonic, he's crazy. And he's a, he's he's one of many who are leading a rebellion against the Most High in this modern day Tower of Babel. See, this these are the daughter of the Chaldeans. All right, back here today. Okay, but that you 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 all is actually a synonymous with Yabal, which is one of the sons of Cain. I thought that was interesting. So this word insolence. I don't think we looked it up. The word is uh, rude and disrespectful behavior. As the scriptures tell you in Daniel, the seventh chapter, he would speak great words against the most high. Presumptuous. Look up the word presumptuous. The word presumptuous. A person of their behavior failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. So we're witnessing a, a nation of people rule outside of the limits of the law. <laughs> bold, they're bold in their pride. See? The, the GMOs. Okay? Again, he would speak. Let's get Daniel 7. Not Dan 7, Daniel 7. Get Daniel 7. Speaking of the final rulership before the end came, right? Speaking of this, this very system Habakkuk is uh, seeing a vision of Daniel 7 and 25 and he will speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and to think to change times and laws and they shall be given unto his hand a time and times of dividing of times going to that 350 year period from 1619 to the 60s where the Lord finally sent us the Holy Spirit man that marked the end of this man's rulership all right but when you when you read that word wear out the saints. The word is bala. To wear away, to harass constantly. And that's what this system was set up to do, to harass the chosen people constantly. All right. In ways we don't even uh, know exist. We're being harassed. NLT, he will defy the most high. He will defy the most high and oppress the holy people. He will try to change their sacred festivals and laws and they will be placed under his control for a time and times and a half a time. All right. And that's the during the period where we had no idea what was going on. All right. So the word defy means to openly resist, refuse to obey. So, again, Habakkuk two and five. Yea, also because he transgressed by wine. He is a proud man. Neither keep it at home. All right. Who, meaning he's all over the place, which when you deal with Esau's blessing real quick. Genesis 27 and 39 and Isaac, his father, answered him and said unto him, behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven from above, meaning you would have control at one point. This is Esau's blessing. This is why Esau is ruling the earth today, because it was it was a blessing given unto him. And by thy sword shall thy live, meaning his military, and thou shalt serve thy brother. He did that under you know, King David and Solomon. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. All right. And since then, all right, when you go to uh, once Solomon went off <laughs> real quick, let me show you. First Kings 11. When Solomon went off. All right. Immediately. 
In verse 14, the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad, the Edomite. So ultimately, they were under our dominion, under David and Solomon, but then they uprooted from under that dominion. You see? And when you look up this word dominion, because since then, this man has just been going to and fro and, you know, going into these various different nations, you know, trying to obtain what he has today. OK. But this word dominion. Is reward. All right. And it means to wander restlessly to roam. And this is what he does. He's go. He goes throughout the four corners of the earth, as we're reading here. That he neither keep it at home. He's all over the world. He's wandering all over the world doing his wickedness. Who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death. See? And cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And that's what he's trying to do. He wants everybody and everything under his control. Shall not all these take up a parable against him? And see, because of his tyranny, because his 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 greed, his his wicked way people are waking up to him see and we're witnessing this right now people are taking up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him saying woe to him that increaseth in that which is not his how long and to him that ladeth himself with thick clay so the nations are cursing his ass out and this word thick clay when you go into it all right it's i bought yeah, which means weight of heavy pledges, heavy debts. All right. And when you deal with fractional reserve banking, this is one of many ways. But this is one of the main ways that they have been able to enslave the nations through a, a debt, having, you know, the, the, just having nations in debt. OK, nations of people just in debt. All right. And through that, they're perpetual slaves to him. So the people, all right, as the scriptures say, um, feel his belly. When he was about to fill his belly, Job 20 and 23, when he is about to fill his belly, the most high shall cast his fury upon him. Hold up. Oh, yep. Job 20 and 22 in the fullness of his sufficiency, when he's getting ready to fully establish what he you know has put out to do all right which they put it on the back of the dollar bill all right the, the, they you know up up into the point where they would do away with paper money is the time where the heavenly father all right would would take their ass down but they would use that as a means to put people in debt but when you look at the back of the dollar bill it says uh, uh new conceptives nuvos order seclorum which that's going back to the Latin, going back to a Roman poet, but ultimately it means the gods have granted us permission to establish a new world order, a new secular order. And it comes with doing away with that dollar. So in the fullness of his sufficiency, he will be in straits, which we see him in straits, and every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. And this word wicked, all right, I maul, is the workman, the laborer, the wretched one, the sufferer, okay? And ultimately, at the forefront of that is the Israelites. Okay, let's get James, the fifth chapter. But the working class is coming up against his ass, man. Okay, James five and four. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Crieth and the cries of them which have reaped have entered into the ears of the lords of Sabaoth. All right. And General Johanna says the Lord of Sabaoth means the Lord of the Sabbath. Sabbath oath means the Lord of, of armies, man. <laughs> you, you, a lot of you leaders, man, are just <laughs> crazy. Sabbath oath means the, the, the Lord of armies, man. See, not the Sabbath. You, you dudes are crazy, man. Anyway, um, going back here. So this, this is happening now. People are, are crying out against his ass, man. Starting with the prophets, but now there's a spirit on all people, even his own kind, to come up against him. Okay? It says, shall not they rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and shall awake 
that shall vex thee and thou shall be for booties unto them because these nations are going to be used all right through prophecy coming to pass as a means to take your ass down man and you're going to be spoiled all right let's read this in the nlt suddenly your debtors will take action they will turn on you and take all you have while you stand trembling helpless man so it's all going to turn on babylon the great it's all going to turn on you edomites you're going to lose control and the heavenly father is going to allow you to be taken down in the sight of all of the nations man woe to him that covet the evil covetous to, to his house that he may set his nest on high that he may be delivered from the power of evil. So <coughs> he's put out all of this wickedness, but he set himself up in a position to where he's not affected by it, meaning the elites. All right. When you get Job, let's get Job 21. All right. In seven, wherefore do the wicked live and become old? Yea, they are mighty in power. Their seed is established in their sight. Their offsprings before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear. Neither is the rod of the most high upon them. They are living their blessing. See, the regular everyday Edomite, they're, they're through. Right? But the, the elites are living in a manner, man. If you saw and understood how much money and how they're really living, you don't really see it. You know, they show you Elon Musk and Gil Bates. You know, the, all of these different Edomites just, you know, the throw. But there's Edomites that you don't know their names that are living fabulous. We know certain families because we're in a time where they're being exposed. You know, the Red Shield people. Right. But when you look at the wealth and the, under, the understand the power that these people have. All right. They not eating the food you eat. OK. As it says here, the rod of the most high is not upon them. Their bull gender it and fell it not. Their cow calve it and cast it not her calf. So they're, they're, the food they eat, the beef they eat, is different from the beef you eat. You eat the beef of sick cattle, GMO cattle. They're, all of their stuff is all natural. See, they're winning. But ultimately, as you keep reading, in verse uh, 7, Twenty nine, it says, have you not asked them that go by the way? And do you not know their tokens that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. See, they're reserved to the day of destruction. Who shall declare his way to his face and who shall repay him for what he have done? All right. So going back. And we'll read through it. Habakkuk 2 and 8, because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for violence of the land and of the city and all that dwell therein. And he has the ner nerve to try to set us up to be a hate group. <laughs> it was all going to turn on you. OK, you spoiled the nations. So now you're getting ready to be spoiled and your own people are going to turn on you. Why? Because of what? The, 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 what you've done to the earth, what you've done to humanity, what you, you set up these wicked, oppressive cities. You polluted every goddamn thing. All right. And going back to verse nine, woe to him that covered an evil covenant to his house that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. And the Lord made it to where you were able to to do this but it's going to come a point as the scriptures say you're not going to pass the bounds that are appointed unto you thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul okay so now we're witnessing all right the signs and effects that are associated with your end for the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it meaning all of the, the, the destruction of these buildings all right. Things blowing up. OK. Uh, 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 you know, stuff like 9-11, all of this stuff is associated with your end. And it's your own elites, the only elites that are doing this. OK. Woe to him that build it a town by blood with blood. And, and this go also goes into people catching hell, man. All right. People catching hell because of his oppressive rule. Okay, woe to him that buildeth the town with blood 
and established a city by iniquity. How was America established? Right? So woe to him that built the town with blood. It was stolen. Rape, robbery, and murder. All right? And then they say it was divine intervention. Well, it was because the Heavenly Father set you up to do this. But then there's a judgment tied to you doing this. Behold, is it not of Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, that the people shall labor in very fire and the people shall weary themselves, all right, for very vanity? All right? So the Lord has set you up to put hell on the people, right? So this is describing what they would do, okay? This is going into the image of the beast, <laughs> uh, part of it, all right? Let's get this in the NLT. Had not the Lord of heaven's armies promised that the wealth of the nations will turn into ashes? They work so hard, but all in vain. It's all going to be taken from you. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters that cover the sea. Because see, these nations, when you get Psalms, the second chapter. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. So through this system and everything they're trying to set up in their own version of immortality, what they're trying to do is right here. It says, let us break their chains. All right. Our connection to the power, uh, our power, they, they cry and free ourselves from slavery to the most high. So they're trying to free themselves for being subject to the most high's will. See, but he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath through all of these things happening through the prophets coming out and preaching, speaking these things into existence and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. So the, the determination of the Lord is that Yahweh shy <laughs> and his people rule. In the holy hill of Zion, which is Jerusalem. See, I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shall break them with the rod of iron and thou shalt dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. And this is what they're trying to establish their own will for the purpose of getting around what's written. <laughs> they are trying to get around the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. It says. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as waters cover the sea. You're not going to prosper. You're going to eventually the Lord is going to set up a profitable ruler to where the earth can be turned back into paradise. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink that wine. That puttest thy bottle to him, that makest him drunken, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. And nakedness is associated with sin. So woe to him that make people to go off, right, and take advantage of them. All right. He put Bill Cosby all in the news, right? Well, you do what Bill Cosby, all right, quote unquote, did, right? You did it, all right, worldwide. What, 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 what? With more hardcore drugs and more hardcore wine and lies, man. You got the people drunk off of your BS and you took advantage of them. Woe to people that do stuff like that. This is where you came over here to the Native Americans and they were drinking out of the creeks. All right. But you came with fire water. How was the fire water, the alcohol better than what they already had? Are they better off now by following your stupid ass? So this is what you did to the nations, especially the nation of Israel. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also. It's your turn to drink. See, as it says in the book of Isaiah 51. All right. These are the times we in Isaiah 51. In 22, thus said the Lord thy God. That pleaded the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again, but I will put it into the hand of them that afflicted thee, that have said to thy soul, bow down, you know, bow to my image, boy, 
bow to me, boy, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street of them that went over. And for years, they've been able to just walk over us. But now we're living in a time where the Lord has put a spirit on a remnant of us to raise up through the spirit, man. Okay, so now you are filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered. Let the cup of the Lord's right hand be turned upon thee and shameful spewing on thy glory. All right. This also goes what to Lamentations, the fourth chapter. Lamentations four. All right. And twenty one. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup shall also pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion, showing you that our captivity ends through the, the, the biblical Edomites being raised up. He will no more away carry thee into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Okay. Uh, the dregs. There's a Psalm 75 and 8 For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup And the wine is red It is full of mixture And he poureth out the same But the dregs thereof All the wicked of the earth Shall uh, wring them out and drink them But I will declare forever I will sing praises to the God of Jacob all the horns of the wicked shall be cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. So the rulership of you heathen is going to be cut off, man. <laughs> okay. For the Lord holds a cup in his hand that is full of foaming wine. The, the end, the bitter, the bitter end of, of, of what the Lord, the judgment, man. <laughs> foaming wine mixed with spices. He pours it out, the wine. In judgment and all the wicked must drink it, draining, draining it to the dregs. So the you Edomites are going to re receive the harshest judgment of all of the nations, man. Even us, what we went through, your your judgment is going to be even worse. And then you're going to be absolutely decimated as a nation. And a lot of people will hear that message and say it's hateful. But when you look at the condition of the earth and what comes once he's gone, you you then understand. OK, so let's go back here. Habakkuk 2 and 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of Yahweh's right hand shall be turned unto thee and a shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. This is why everybody's cursing your ass out. OK, especially the elites. All right. The, the so-called noble families when Prince, when Queen Elizabeth so-called died. All right. King George, whenever they die, what are people saying? Oh, man, fuck them. They stole this. They stole that. There's a shameful spewing on your glory. It's all associated with prophecy. That's why everybody's cursing out the small hats. For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee and the spoil of beasts, which made them afraid. You destroyed the animals. OK. Because of men's blood. And when you look up, when you deal with the violence of Lebanon, Lebanon is where the uh the bulk of the trees used to build the temple the wood would come from there so that could be symbolic of the elect the violence of the elect see you you're gonna pay for that okay the spoil of beasts which made them afraid and lebanon which you know that means pure white i believe it's talking about the the the, the earth too The actual landmass of Lebanon is beautiful. La ba na wan. Whiteness. Okay. A wooded mountain range. All right. On the northern border of Israel. Okay. Laban to be white, pure. Okay. And, and he's every, anything pure. He's defiled it. He's made it a point. Okay. To, to defile everything, man. So for the you you you've been violent to everything pure and the elect are pure. So you 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 you're gonna pay for all of this BS you did, the spoil of beast. All right, the scriptures tell you a righteous man is 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 good to his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel, man. Look what you did to the animals. Misplaced them, genetically altered them, 
which made them afraid. You look at animals, they all depressed because of the men's blood for the violence of the land and of the city and of all that dwell therein, man. See, what profited a graven image that the maker thereof have graven it in the molten image and a teacher of lies. That goes into that haragma, that goes into his, his idol worship. And the haragma is an idol. Let's get Revelation 13 real quick. Revelation 13 and 16. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, all right? And as many as not worship it, he would cause them to be killed. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a haragma in his right hand or in their foreheads. The haragma, which is that mark, is what? Which the root word is karax, which is what? A pale, something you stick in something, all right, to sharpen to a point, right? But the word haragma, all right, a mark stamped on the forehead has a right hand of the badge, as the badge of the followers of the anti-Messiah, which goes back to an ancient custom, like the Elamites, they put that dot on their head, <laughs> all right, well, in, in ancient times, all right, people will put dots on their head or tattoos or brands to show their alliance to a God. In this modern, all right, uh, world, they're able to do that digitally. A mark branded upon horses to show that he owns. All right. Why? Let's type it in. Why is cattle branded? Hmm. Branding cattle identifies cattle who are free roaming range serves as a de uh, to deter cattle basically all right to animals to their rightful owners <laughs> okay branding cattle is to identify the owner of the animals so this is this the system they're setting up right now through this haragma they're getting ready to force on your ass a mark branded up on horses, thing carved, the sculpture, graven work of idolatrous images. This is an idol. Okay? So Habakkuk 2 and 18, NLT, what good is an idol carved by a man? All right? Or a cast image that deceives you. How foolish to trust in your own creation a God that can't even talk. And this is what they're doing right now. <laughs> all right and they're trying now the idol is speaking you know ai all right woe to him that saith to wood awake to the dumb stone arise it shall teach behold it is laid over with gold and with silver and there is no breath in the midst of it but yahweh is in his holy temple let all the earth keep silence before for him now in the next chapter which i've done a video on this i may just reload it he gives the vision of the destruction that's going to take place, which is the destruction of Babylon the Great, where the Lord, all right, sends the chariots of salvation to take down the wicked and deliver his people, man. So maybe we'll go into that again, or maybe I'll load an older video. Hopefully I'll edify it onto the next Shalom.